We want to know now, and that's why we have Adam Schefter here to try to break this all down for us. What exactly did the NFL know about this video? Well, a couple of things to keep in mind here. Number one, I emailed the league at 6 a.m. this morning. We're still awaiting a response as to whether the league had the actual video, simply knew what was in the video, ever witnessed the video. We do not know the actual concrete answer to that question just yet. Saying that, either they had the video, and this is egregious beyond words, to the point where it can never be undone, the damage that the league did, or they didn't see the video, and now you would think, even though there's double jeopardy and you can't discipline players twice, we'll have the chance to go back and try to make a wrong right. It's one or the other. There's no in-between. Okay, so let's just be clear. I want to make sure we're operating under the assumption that the league, to your knowledge, has not seen the video. No, I'm not saying that. I do not know that. I'm saying that we are uncertain exactly what the league has and hasn't seen. I think it's fair to assume that the league, at the very least, knew what was in the video because we had heard conversation about Janae striking Ray and Ray hitting her back. But it's one thing to hear about domestic violence, and it's another thing to actually witness it. And now that we've all witnessed it, it tells a very different story, and everybody comes away sickened from watching that video. Disturbing. Disturbing. Question for you. First of all, how long have you been covering the NFL? 25 years. The NFL, I don't know anybody who knows it better. What's the chances are that they didn't see this video before Roger Dell's decision came down? Well, again, let's also look at this, not just from the NFL standpoint, from the legal enforcement standpoint, from the Baltimore Ravens standpoint. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was getting there. From the NFL. Right. Because we're going to pile it on the NFL, and the NFL's deserving of whatever it gets here. But what about the other parties involved in this? And that's where there's such a breakdown in this, where everybody has dropped the ball and let down society and overlooked the rules of basic human logic and decency. We're talking about a legal system that basically allowed him into a pretrial intervention program that didn't prosecute him to the full extent of the law. We're talking about a football team that allowed him to use its training facility to hold a press conference, to stand behind him, to come out in support of him, to talk about what a great guy he is, and to document the type of individual he was on its website and send out tributes to him. And then there's the NFL that went ahead and suspended him for two games. There's blame, plenty of blame, to go all around, to apply to all aspects of society, the legal system, the National Football League, a football team in the National Football League. There are some people that really made egregious mistakes here. Uh, I watched the video this morning, and you pretty much hit all the points of what I said, and I talked to Skip about this. Uh, it is beyond disturbing, and quite frankly, it's arrogant. It's arrogant of the NFL to just say two games and walk away with that. I want you to help me understand this. Roger Goodell says we're coming out with this policy, this much more strict policy, stiffer penalties. I have to believe that it was all a facade. I have to believe he knew that this video at some point in time would come out and he'd have to answer for that. If this video had never existed, we'd still be working with two games and that's it. This is what a two game suspension looks like. Well, I, 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 I'm not gonna- I should not right. even see one day this season on the field. One day. He should not be playing this season at all. I don't think anybody would argue that. And this is not for me to explain why the league did what the league did. The league is gonna have to explain this. Anybody who saw that cannot explain it. And there are people, again, who messed this up. We talked before the show, and, and I really believe this, that when you look back at the history of the NFL, Pete Rozelle, the former commissioner, talked about his greatest regret, the biggest regret of his career, his time as commissioner, was allowing games to be played the Sunday after President John F. Kennedy had been assassinated. And that has come up over and over in history as a real turning point in the NFL, a tipping point, something that people look back, a touchstone moment in history. This, in my mind, oh. and it's very fresh, 
exceeds that. Not even wow. close. This, this will be easily the greatest regret that Roger Goodell ever had. This will be the greatest regret in my mind. I can't think of anything. I've called some people this morning that the NFL has ever had. Mm. Can you think of a darker moment for the league than this? And I challenge you, if there's one out there, please let me know it. Nothing no. compares. First of all, I am ashamed of our legal system for letting this man off with nothing more than anger management training. And I'm not even sure to what degree he has had to undergo that. So that was the first error here. I, I'm ashamed of our commissioner because, well, let's, let's we, do, do we think the police saw this video? Do we? It, Absolutely. Surely they did. Sure. Over the line that now this commissioner, he, did, he just did it once. He backed off and said, I made a grave mistake here. I admit I was wrong. I'm going to upgrade the punishment, yeah. but it's not going to be retroactive to Ray Rice. I'm sorry, Mr. Commissioner. Now it has to be retroactive to Ray Rice. If you're going to do the right thing the first time, th this is, is so disturbing and, and so graphic in nature that now you, you have to suspend him for, for you, you have to tack on at least more games, if not the whole year. The whole year. Now, will the NFLPA fight back? I assume so. But public opinion is going to be overwhelmingly well, let, 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 against. Let's look at some basic right. facts. Let me ask you a question. If somebody in this company did what Ray Rice did, get out of here. would they still be working here? No. no way. If somebody in any other company did what Ray Rice did, would they be working where they are? No. no. And yet Ray Rice is eligible to be reinstated this Friday after the Baltimore Ravens play the Pittsburgh Steelers on Thursday Night Football. Mm -hmm. He's eligible to come back to work after an incident that we've all seen okay. right now like that. And yes, it is a major failing of the justice. We just got a, a statement from the NFL. It says, we requested, this is from the NFL, we requested from law enforcement any and all information about the incident, including the video from inside the elevator. The video was not made available to us, and no one in our office has seen it until today. Well, that's a big deal. That's a big deal in terms of us looking at Roger Goodell. The penalty should, still should have been stiffer. But at the same time, if you haven't seen it, because let's face it, if a picture is worth a thousand words, a video is worth, in this particular case, about a hundred million, if not more. So there's no question that if Roger Goodell had seen this video and still came down with just a two-game suspension, it would be everything that we're saying. It's still bad, but at the same time, having not seen that video, okay, Roger Goodell, I want to say he gets a pass because obviously it should have been more than two games. But at the same time, again, us, we talked about this incident on several occasions on this show as well as various other shows here at ESPN. And whatever position we took, it paled in comparison to what position we're taking once we saw that actual. So would you be okay if he then went retroactive? I have no problem with it. As a matter of fact, I, I'd go one better. I actually think Ray Rice should voluntarily sit out the season. I actually think Ray Rice should sit there and be ashamed to show his face and say, I really, really don't need to show up. But Ray Rice knew all along what had happened. I know that. So it'd be, I know it, would, that. it would ring rather hollow for him. Sure, sure it would. Now, now yeah. and say, sure, I sure. to sit out the season. Sure it would, but what I'm talking about is the level of discomfort because obviously the Baltimore Ravens should be incredibly embarrassed over all of this as well because we've seen you have people looking at Harbaugh and wondering what his position was in terms of why he wasn't more outspoken against Ray Rice as well as the Ravens organization. And obviously with Roger Goodell, you were expecting the same thing from the NFL. So you were assuming that somehow, some way, they had to have seen this video. If the NFL is saying that they didn't see it, chances are the Baltimore Ravens are going to say the same thing. Question for you, Schefter. NFL sees the video now. They go retroactive? Uh, again, under the CBA, I don't know that you're allowed to do that. I don't think you can do that. Well, which but, is why I said they would fight. But would they win that if, if they, they contest? But the, 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 these are unprecedented circumstances and then again you're going to become the NFLPA and you're going to be arguing on behalf of Ray Rice after watching that it's but that's a me, tough case to that. defend let me tell you what let me tell you what recourse Roger Goodell could take I spoke to a couple of lawyers this morning one of the things that was mentioned to me was that Roger Goodell could possibly elect to suspend Ray Rice retroactively under the best interest of the game guy sure put the onus on the players association to go in the public and try to fight that fight on behalf of ray rice and good luck with that roger goodell could do that so there is some level of recourse he appears to have here okay allow me to point out the day after ray rice first addressed the media remember i said 
I'm sorry, I'm not going to stand up and applaud him. Remember that? Because I wasn't buying his contrition. I, I wasn't buying the sincerity. I wasn't buying that he four times ducked questions about Ray. Just, just give us the basics. What happened inside that elevator? No, I can't. I don't want to talk about that. And my point was, if nothing more than to set the right example for your teammates and your other NFL brethren, if you get in a situation like this, this is how not to handle it and how to handle it. Mm -hmm. But now I know why he couldn't talk about it. Of course. There, there, there was so much that was so disturbing about what we saw in the elevator. The punch in and of itself, you cannot watch and not get sick watching. But then also... The other part about it is his reaction. His to it. reaction yes. is he it seemed over really different about it. Like it was, it was a your, normal day. Yeah, there was nothing like about it that was disturbing. Got to wiped him. out, and he just kind of stood there. There was no panic. There was okay. no alarm. There was no concern. There was no Adam. Should remorse, the NFL no have done more to get the video? I have a hard time believing such a powerful entity could not get the video from inside of the elevator. Should they have done more oh, yeah, to get I, the video? I'll go back to what I said at the beginning. They may not have seen that video. But they had an idea of the contents of the video. And as you said, it's different to watch it. So if we believe their statement and we give them the benefit of the doubt that they never saw it, then yes, they should have done that. But you know what? There are plenty of cases like that. Mm. Most times, video is not available. This happened to happen in a I elevator of a casino, right? So th there are cases right now. And, and I think, you know, we're focusing on this incident, and we should. But there's a big, broad picture to this. This has shined a huge spotlight on the issue of domestic violence, which has always been there. That's right. But it's getting more attention than it should, and it's good. It's good that we're finally focusing in on that. But there are players in the NFL right now yeah. who have been in cases. If you read the transcript from the court case that involved Greg Hardy, the Panthers defensive end, who's making $13.1 million this season, he's being allowed to play. And if you read the transcripts from that case, wow. There's a case in San Francisco, and we'll see what happens again. Innocent until proven guilty. But there was a case of Ray McDowell. He played yesterday. He played yesterday. So, again, there are cases going on that it's time for everybody, mm. everybody to open their eyes and to pay attention and to listen to some of the silent screams that are going on out there. Okay, so bottom line, we now have the NFL and NFL Players Association negotiating a new PED bylaw, right? which could work retroactively to get Josh Gordon off the hook and Wes Welker off the hook, let me right? say, let, let me interrupt you right here and just say this. This will be a huge embarrassment to have suspensions like that That's overturned and saying. to have Ray Rice's stand. That's what I'm saying. How do you if do they get overturned and they get, they're all of a sudden eligible again, oh. Ray Rice? Whoo. Oh. All right, uh, Adam Schefter, thank you for joining us. Uh, well said, don't ignore the silent screams. We will have more First Take after the break.